In this video, we're going to talk about how to decompose a composite function. So if you're familiar with composition of functions, this is like doing that process in reverse. So we're trying to find out what are those two original functions such that when we compose them together, we got the final function. So let's take a look at uh, three examples. Let's start with this first example. h of x is equal to 2x plus 1 to the fourth power. So we're trying to find out what were the original functions f and g such that when they were composed, they gave us this. Now, the way I like to think about it is, what's the inner function and what's the outer function? So in this case, the inner function could be thought of this whole quantity inside the parentheses. So let's just write here, inner. And so the inner function, when you look at this notation, f of g of x, g of x is like our inner function. It's what we're putting in to the outer shell or the outer function. So in this case, I would say that g of x is equal to 2x plus 1, whereas f of x, the outer function, is this quantity to the fourth power. So I would say that's equal to x to the fourth power. Now, you can always check your work to see if you're on the right track. Just go ahead and do the composition of functions. You'd say, okay, g of x is equal to 2x plus 1. Then you go to your f function, which is right here. Whatever's in the parentheses goes in place of x, okay? So that's going to equal 2x plus 1, all raised to the fourth power, and we're getting back our h of x function. Now, this is just one possibility. There's a lot of other possibilities. You could think of, instead of this whole thing being the inner function, to maybe just the 2x being the inner function. So here we're going to say another possibility, g of x is equal to 2x, and then the outer function, or the outer shell, you could say, our f of x function is equal to x plus 1 to the fourth power. Now you can check your work, again, by doing the composition of functions, f of g of x. g of x is equal to 2x. And this 2x now, it goes in place of x on the right. So you're going to replace x with our input 2x. And you can see we're getting back the original function h of x all put to together, composed together. So there's more than one possibility, but think of that inner and outer. Let's take a look at it, the second example now. Okay, now for example number two, we have h of x is equal to the square root of the quantity 3x plus 7. How would you do that one? See if you can pause the video. So we're trying to find out what's f of g of x. So again, you want to think of the inner function and the outer function. The inner function is our g of x. So in this case, what's the, the, the insides, the guts of this, the matter, right? Well, in this case, this is the inside right here, right? That's the 3x plus 7. So I would say g of x is equal to the quantity 3x plus 7. Whereas the outer function, f of x, okay, is equal to the square root of x. Now, again, we can check our work. We say g of x is equal to 3x plus 7, and that's going in now to our f function in place of x. So that's going to equal the square root of replacing that x with 3x plus 7. And you can see now we're getting back our h of x function. Now, you might be saying, Mario... Uh, I got something else. And you could definitely do this a different way. Another way to do this is to think of maybe the inner function as maybe just, uh, let's say, 3x. So we could say g of x is equal to 3x. That's our inner function. And then f of x could equal the square root of x plus 7. So when you go to compose these now, what you're doing is you're saying, okay, what's uh, f of g of x, g of x is equal to 3x. That 3x now is going in place of x on the right, in place of x there, so you get square root of 3x plus 7, the same thing as our h of x function. So there's different ways to do this decomposition process to figure out what those two original functions could have been. Uh, again, more than one answer. Let's take a look at the third example, see if you can try this one. Okay, see if you can pause the video and do number three here. h of x is equal to negative three over the quantity x plus four to the third power. So how would you decompose this function uh, into f and g such that f of g of x is equal to this h of x function? 
Well, if I was gonna do this problem, again, I'm gonna think about what's the inner and what's the outer function. So g of x represents our inner function. And in this case, I might think that this quantity right here is kind of like on the inside, right? This is just one possibility, x plus four. Whereas our outer function, f of x, that's gonna equal negative three over x cubed. Now, again, you can check your work by doing the composition. You say f of g of x, g of x we said was x plus four, and that x plus four, it's going in place of x on the right. So whatever's here goes in place of x here on the right. So this is gonna be negative three over x plus four, the quantity cubed. Now you might be saying, you know, Mario, uh, I got something different, or is there a different way to do this? And there certainly is. Like you could say, for example, that the um, inner function, g of x, is equal to x plus four cubed. And then your outer function, f of x, could just be equal to negative three over x this time. So now when you compose these ones, let's take a look. We've got f of g of x. g of x is this whole quantity here, x plus four to the third power. And that's going in for x on the right. So when we do that, that's gonna be negative three over this whole quantity, x plus four cubed in place of x. And you can see we're getting the exact same as our original h of x a function here. So great job if you're able to follow these examples. If you want some more practice and you want some more uh, explanation, check out a previous video I did right there talking about how to decompose functions, and I'll see you over in that video.